And they're off. Great guys, uh, good to have you back. Welcome to the very first episode of Keto Gourmet Chef. Um, I'm hoping the battery's gonna last, the camera's gonna last, you're gonna see enough. So, um, as I say, this is an experiment. I'm, I've tried to position this so that I can capture as much as what I need to show you. And um, today we're gonna be making a dish Pretty much it's a pork stew, okay, with some uh, pork sausage. We're gonna be putting in some garlic, some carrot, and some fennel. And pretty much always for flavor, the, um, the holy grail of flavor pretty much in French cuisine is always onions, carrots, and celery, okay? This bad boy over here. So um, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly um, because I want to give you a real reflection on the kind of time that it takes to prepare a meal like this. You know, if you if you know what you're doing, really, it doesn't have to take very much time. Uh, I am a little restricted in that this little muscle pot is the only pot that I could find. So um, I'm not going to try and cook all the ingredients here in one shot. I'll rather try and split it into um, two meals and uh, we'll take it from there. So pretty much what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the preparation, get everything prepared, then I'm going to probably have to change the camera over to when we start cooking. That'll be a separate video. Unfortunately, you know, trial and error, this is what I'm going to do. Right, so <clears throat> first things first, Proper, proper sharp knives, right? This is a Wusthof knife, German's finest Stollinger steel, something like that. And uh, I'm lost in a kitchen without this device. So here we go. First things first, we're gonna take an onion and uh, we're going to chop this. Okay, really what we wanna do is uh, we want to try and achieve a mirepoix. A mirepoix in French is a fine dice. And pretty much that is almost what we use for flavoring in uh, all our dishes, okay? Generally always a combination of um, carrots, onions, and celery. So, first things first, cut it in half, slice it down like this, and then we're going to go this way, watch your fingers, and one more. Right, so I think that'll probably be enough onion for the batch that I'm going to be making. And here we just cut it into a nice dice, yeah? Right. So that should be about enough onion. What we're going to do is we'll transfer that into this bowl here. Again, just so you can get an idea of quantity. Right, that's going to give us a lot of flavor. Next, what we're going to do is take a bit of celery. Cut off yesterday's trimmings. And here we have lovely piece of produce, nice green celery. Again, we want to cut this in probably half centimeter thickness, more or less the same quantity as the onion. Okay, so pretty much equal quantities. Throw that in there. And then we're gonna be taking 
a few carrots. Just give this a quick peel. Um, I must say, I feel almost like the produce here in Belgium. I don't know, it just seems to have a bit more flavor, a bit more color. Um, but then again, you know, I might be biased. Having recently come to the country, and this is my new place that I'm going to be living in, obviously I've got to be as positive and proactive about it as possible. But, um, yeah, you know, I've only done or cooked one dish since I've been here. Um, that was just a bit of a trial to test the kitchen and get to know how the stove and that works. Unfortunately, the first day I bought a whole chicken and I thought I'd go nice and easy and make a, uh, a roast chicken dish. But unfortunately, the stove here, well not the stove, the oven, is a gas oven and it wasn't working. so. I had to change my plans, so what I decided to make instead was a, uh, a chicken fri fricasse, okay, which is pretty much a chicken dish, cooked in a few vegetables with stock. It's almost like a stew, but cooked in a, a shallow dish, as it were, okay. Right, so next step here, what we want to do, cut off the ends of the carrots. Cut this into three, like that. And again, what we want here, we don't want too much sweetness with the pork. Okay, that's not kind of the flavor that I'm trying to achieve. So really, this is just for a little bit of color to make the dish look more attractive. And... Um, Obviously, adds a little bit of sweetness. But uh, really orange, these carrots, you can see. I mean, back home, our carrots tend to be a little more on the yellow side, yellowish orange, but not as deep. I mean, I would almost call this a strawberry orange, you know? So just this last guy here, take him, and give that a little slice and dice. So as you can see, it's not a lot of carrot. I'm going to be putting that into our little bowl here. And that's really just our foundation. That's just the base that we want, right? Um, going on from there, what I want to do is I will need to put two good bay leaves in there. So in go with the bay leaves. And then again, depending on taste guys, obviously these are chilies. Um, I'm going to be using four chilies here. I enjoy the heat, so again, you know, if you're not that much into chili, you can always put less. But as I say, I like a bit of heat. So I'm going to be going with that. And the green guys. So there we have our chilies. Now um, I must say one gets used to video quite quickly, you know, you just gotta take it as if you're pretty much speaking to someone or someone standing across the way here from you and you've got to take it from there, okay? So that's what we're looking like at the moment. Bay leaves, carrots, celery, onion, and a few chilies, right? Then from here, we're gonna go across to the fennel. Now, fennel and pork is a wonderful combination, okay? 
Um, again, be careful, you know, when you're using an ingredient like this, this is where you want your primary flavor to come from, okay? So you don't want to complicate this, okay? Um, in dishes like this, you can obviously use thyme, you could even use tarragon, goes well with pork. But then again, when you're going to use a vegetable like this, which actually has quite a lot of flavor, you don't really want to be confusing the palate with too many herby type spices, okay? So I'm going to rely on this to provide most of the flavor, so I'm not going to be put in, putting in other herbs that I would normally put in, like possibly um, thyme or, or any other herb for that matter. But really we're just going to slice this guy up and again here you could slice this in rounds you can slice it in half if you want um, doesn't really matter so Like that. I'm actually going to cut these in half so that they are the same. I'll just give that a little chop like that. that. We don't need. And there we go. Okay, so there pretty much is our fennel. Gonna throw that in and again you know depending on how you want this to look in the, the dish you could dice that too if you wanted but uh, I think it's better to have a little bit of a combination of, remember that dice is gonna cook more quickly so once the dish actually comes out you're gonna see these pieces of fennel as opposed to being all diced up and then you know you it's going to just basically emulsify into the sauce. Right? Now, <clears throat> the other thing I'm going to be putting in, some lovely vine tomatoes. Um, this I'm mainly doing just to add a little bit of color. Okay, um, A little bit of color, a little bit of sweetness. That's why I didn't want too many carrots. Uh, so we're going to toss a couple of these guys in as well. Give them just a little slice in half. Like this. And these guys too, I mean... Just taste, some taste better than back home, I'm telling you. It doesn't make sense to me. We're in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, we've got loads of sunlight more sunlight than here so i'm not sure maybe they don't even grow these here maybe they come from spain or who knows um, but they are delicious right last two so there we go they are vegetables for this particular dish we don't need more than that now we're going to go across to the meat. Now, those veggies, I haven't worked out exactly what the costing is, but all of the ingredients that I bought here today, and as I say, this will probably give me two dishes or two meals. Uh, I'm only going to cook half of it now because I don't want to run out of space in my little black muscle pot. And um, so, you know, I've spent there 17 euros today on these few bits and bobs and then I added a little bit of celery which I already had um, and two carrots so I mean pretty much the same price right so what we're looking for here is we're looking for when you're making a stew or anything more flavor you always want this marbling this fat in between okay it's like connective tissue um, and again when you cut this don't cut this too small, right? You want texture, you want to see the pieces. Um, so kind of that sort of size, right? 
So we're just, again, for the purposes of my pot, we're just going to uh, do this in two batches. Okay, so the rest we can do it another, another time, another date. And here what we have is also pork, but pretty much like a pork rasher. Okay, so remember what we're trying to do here is we are looking for high fat because we're going in, we ultimately, our objective is ketogenesis. It's, it's uh, to ensure that we take in 70% fat into our diet, 25% protein, and 5% only of carbohydrates. And those carbohydrates need to be um, in the form of vegetables, right? So we'll give this a quick slice. And there we go, okay? So there's our little portion of meat. Um, this is gonna be to serve two people and we pretty much with that guy, done with that guy. We put that in here. And one thing I don't want to forget, the garlic. So, again here, yeah, depending how much garlic you like, um, we're gonna put in here probably two cloves. Here we go, peel this guy quickly. Um, garlic's an amazing herb. Uh, really, really good, you know, when you're in the bush in South Africa and you get plagued by mosquitoes and insects and things like that. Um, garlic's fantastic. You know, when you eat garlic, you know, You've encountered some of those people who, um, let's put it this way, don't handle garlic as well as, well as others, you know, some that can really smell of it, it, it permeates, comes out of your skin, but uh, they're the fortunate people because the mosquitoes and the insects, they don't take too kindly to garlic. So. Um, Peel that, and here yeah, we'll give this again just a little fine slice. Again, you know, a lot of people think that garlic needs to be very finely diced, okay. Um, think about it, you know, and that's what I enjoy about cooking. It's, it's the whole creative expression. So what you want to do here is you want to picture and envisage what this, this dish is going to look like. So you want those thin filaments of garlic visible, in my opinion, okay. Obviously, you know, if you want to make a smoother sauce and a more refined sauce, you can obviously dice that uh, finely, you can crush it, you can add coarse salt to it, and uh, obviously turn it pretty much into a puree, okay? This lonely tomato here, have to have another piece. And guys, that's that. So got the vegetables, got the meat, one more part of the meat that uh, I don't want to leave out is sausage, right? So here I've bought some nice fat German pork sausages, uh, only one for today because we're going to make this dish again at some point and again what we're going to do here Cut this in half, and we're just going to cut this into about centimeter thick slices. I love the combination of uh, sausage in 
almost any stew, particularly the sort of smoked pork sausage, um, works really well. I also enjoy the um, Portuguese sausage, chorizo, chorizo, however you like to pronounce it. Um, always a, adds a very nice texture, you know, the firmness of the sausage. Um, yeah, it is a little bit processed, but uh, we'll overlook that one. Uh, but the flavor is really good, okay? So basically there you can see we've got our pork and we've got our sausage, right? The next really good combination with pork and sausage is beans, okay? White haricot beans. So that's going to go in and... <coughs> Okay, yesterday I went to the trouble of making my own chicken stock. Today I'm being a bit lazy, so um, yeah, I've bought some chicken stock. We're going to be using that. And in essence, we're good to go. Butter here in Europe is amazing. It's just got a different flavor. It's, I think, a hell of a lot more uh, pure in that, you know, a lot of butter burns easily. And butter that burns very easily, it's... It's because of the, um, the component parts in it that are actually the dirty side of butter. Okay, so those are the parts that catch. That's why when you want to cook something, let's say you want to um, uh, cook chicken in a lot of butter. Uh, the words just evaded me now. But um, basically what you do with butter, if you want the purest form of butter that's not going to burn, uh, what you do is you take a big block of butter like this you put it into a pot or a pan on very low heat and you let that cook down very slowly and what you'll find is you'll find all the solids generally will settle to the bottom it's like a white milky texture okay that's what burns that's what you don't want okay those are the byproducts that have been put into the butter what you want is that clear butter, so, uh, referred to as clarified butter. And what you would do is you would tap all of that clarified butter off, which effectively is much like ghee, what the Indians use to make curries, okay? Um, and when you're using clarified butter and you've taken out those impurities, butter cannot burn, okay? So that's another little tip for you. Right, guys, well, um, from here, I'm going to have to end this video, see this as pretty much the preparation stage. I'm now going to stop this video, part two, I'm going to set it up near the stove. We're going to get everything going, put it all together, uh, and then we'll obviously switch that off for the duration of it cooking. I'll probably pop in and just show you what it looks like from time to time. And then, last but obviously, we'll plate up and I'll show you the final dish. Hope, you, hope you've enjoyed this little video and um, I have to lean over like this to end it. I will see you later.